Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Sarah and today I'd like to start off our lesson by picturing something. I'd like you all to take a moment to picture the African savanna. You might picture things like grasses or trees. You might picture things like zebras or giraffe. And it's a beautiful ecosystem filled with life. But it does raise the question, why aren't there more zebras? And why aren't there more giraffe? Well, the answer lies in something called a carrying capacity. And that's exactly what we're going to be learning about today, so let's get into it. Before we begin talking about carrying capacities, there are a couple other terms that we need to talk about. One of those terms is population size. When we're talking about an organism's population size, all we're talking about is how many individuals of that species exist in an area. So let's say you had 10 zebras pictured on your African savanna. The population size of zebras is 10. The other term that we need to discuss is population density. And this is similar to population size, but we're looking at a very particular area or ecosystem when we're talking about density. So let's say you had 500 zebras on your African savanna. Not only is the population size much larger, the population is also much denser. There are more zebras crammed onto that African savanna. Let's get back to that word carrying capacity that we mentioned before. The carrying capacity of an organism is the maximum population size that the environment can support. All living things, including plants and animals, need stuff to survive. And a species population can grow and grow and grow until it runs out of those things that it needs to survive. So let's take a moment and think of a tree. Trees, like all plants, need many things to survive. They need sunlight, they need fresh air, they need nutrients from the soil, and they need water and space. And if they run out of any of those things, it's going to be really hard for new trees to grow. Now let's switch gears and look at an animal for a second. Let's picture a deer. Like many animals, deer need things to survive. They need food. They need water. They need somewhere to hide or a shelter. They need to be able to avoid predators. And if the population of deer either runs out of these things, or maybe there's too many predators, the population size of deer is not going to be able to grow anymore. When an organism's population size reaches that point where it cannot grow anymore, we call that the carrying capacity. Every organism in every type of ecosystem has a carrying capacity because no environment could support the population growth of a plant or animal forever. Eventually, it's going to run out of those things it needs to survive. Plants and animals that live in a healthy, balanced ecosystem, their population size usually stays right around the carrying capacity. Now let's talk about these things that prevent an organism's population size from growing. We call those things limiting factors. Limiting factors are anything that any organism could experience that would stop the population growth. So let's look at a couple examples. The amount of food available in an ecosystem. As an organism's population size grows, if they run out of food, that's definitely going to stop the growth. Other things like the amount of space available or the amount of mates available. If an organism is unable to find a mate, they're probably going to have a hard time getting their population size to grow. If a limiting factor changes in an ecosystem, the carrying capacity of organisms might also change, which would affect their population size. Now, there are two different types of limiting factors. We have density-dependent limiting factors and density-independent limiting factors. We're going to start with density-dependent. A density-dependent limiting factor is only going to slow or stop an organism's population growth 
once the population size gets too large. The amount of food available in an ecosystem is a good example of a density dependent limiting factor. Imagine a zebra. Zebras, their population size is gonna grow and grow and grow until there's so many zebras that there's not enough food available for everyone. That is gonna stop the population growth of zebras. Let's take a look at a couple other density dependent limiting factors. We said the amount of food available is density dependent, as is the amount of water available for plants and animals in an ecosystem. Then of course we have things like space availability. As an organism's population size grows, they might run out of space. Mate availability is also density dependent, as are things like available territories or available shelters. Predation is also a density dependent limiting factor. How many of your species is falling victim to predators? And lastly, disease is another good example of a density dependent limiting factor because if an organism's population is really dense and there's a disease, that disease is gonna spread really fast and make a lot of animals really sick. Now let's switch gears over to density independent limiting factors. Density independent limiting factors are going to stop or slow an organism's population growth regardless of its population size. One of the best examples of this is a wildfire. A wildfire does not care if there are three individuals or 30 individuals. It is going to impact the ecosystem as a whole regardless of the population size. So let's pause and look at a couple more examples. We said wildfires are a density independent limiting factor, as are things that have to do with the climate like droughts or even floods. Things like hurricanes and other big tropical storms are density independent. Something like a heat wave warming up and drying out the whole ecosystem. These are all examples of density independent limiting factors as are things like pollution. We have an oil spill. The oil that spills is going to affect every organism regardless of its population size. This is already so much information to keep track of, but scientists do kind of simplify our understanding of carrying capacities and limiting factors when we graph an organism's population size. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at two different types of graphs. The first graph that we're going to look at, we are going to pretend that an organism's population has no limiting factors. This organism's population is going to grow and grow and grow seemingly forever. If that happened, we would call it exponential growth or we would say that that population size is growing exponentially. When we graph it, it looks like this and we call it a J curve. Now, this doesn't really happen. Remember we said every organism in every ecosystem has a carrying capacity. No organism's population size can grow forever. Eventually what we're gonna see is it's going to exceed its carrying capacity, and we're gonna see that population size starting to fall a little bit. Now let's switch gears to the other type of graph that I mentioned, which is what we would typically expect to find in a healthy ecosystem. What we would usually see is an organism's population size growing, growing, growing until it runs out of those limiting factors that we mentioned before, and then we see their growth kind of level off, and their population size kind of stays right around the carrying capacity. Remember we said before that if an organism lives in a healthy, balanced ecosystem, their population size usually stays right around the carrying capacity. This type of graph, which we typically expect to find, is called an S-curve. Earlier today I mentioned that if an organism's limiting factors change, then its carrying capacity will also change. 
Humans can impact limiting factors when we affect nature, when we impact the natural world. We don't want to do that. We want organisms to live in that healthy, balanced ecosystem so their population size stays right around the carrying capacity. So one way that you can ensure that plant and animal populations are healthy is by leaving nature all alone. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me today to learn about carrying capacity and limiting factors. If you would like to test your knowledge, be sure to click that link below where you will find quizzes, activities, projects, and so much more. And we can't wait to see you guys next time. Thanks for joining.